some thrift, some thrift flipping. <laughs> Why can't I say that? guys welcome to my channel my name is Jen and I am the urban sewist and this is the urban sewing society where we bring fashion and creativity to your neighborhood thanks so much for joining this week if this is your first time tuning into my channel we do thrifting sewing upcycling refashioning fashion if that is the kind of content that you're interested in then click that link below and click on that bell so that you don't miss an update we're gonna jump into some thrift some we're gonna jump into some thrift flipping <laughs> why can't i say that like easily thrift flip thrift. try saying that seven times anyway we are gonna do some thrift flipping of men's shirt i just feel like are so me they're so something that i would wear this summer i saw these two shirts on one of my favorite youtubers channel it's just jordan and she featured another shirt from this brand what is the name of the brand oh i'll be right back okay <laughs> All right, so it was driving me crazy that I could not remember who made these. The first one is by Source Unknown. And when I saw this shirt, it just, doesn't it just like reek of upcycle? It just seems like it's so easy. The second shirt is from The Frankie Shop. I had to put my little spin on it. This is the one that I made in pink. And I did a little something extra on there, but I love the way these two shirts came out. And then I took two men's white shirts and combined them to make a white shirt dress. I saw Monroe Steele had on this really cute white shirt dress that she got from H&M. There's so much that you can do with men's oversized shirts. I have so many ideas and so many things that I wanna show you guys. I just cannot wait to get into them, but I'm so excited about this because I feel like I don't have enough tops. I feel like I have jeans and then I'm always searching my closet looking for a blouse or a shirt or something that's gonna be cool to wear. I went thrifting and I got these three, one, two, three, four, four thrifted shirts. You can use any color. I chose to do the white shirt exactly like the white shirt and I really like the way it turned out. The blue one, Frankie Shop, I did that one in the pink. And then the other shirt I just did as a plain white shirt dress. And and again, if you can get a couple matching shirts, which I've been really lucky in the past to be at the thrift store and I have found matching shirts and when I see them I buy them. now we'll give you this tip when buying men's shirts I always look at those underarms because I'm gonna tell you I have gotten some shirts that have been yellowed and stained part of the reason I had to make this dress the way that I made it was because it had a little stain on it had a little mark on it but I've actually had to throw away shirts that I got from the thrift store because they had those yellow stains so always look at your shirts that you're getting at the thrift store very very careful we are going to jump right in and get to these upcycles all right you guys enjoy i started off with this men's brooks brothers white shirt for the source unknown top i knew that i was going to have to taper the shirt what i did first was turn the shirt over and created the u-shape in the back I used my chalk pencil to create the U-shape. The U-shape that I created was approximately four to five inches wide, but I would recommend not making it any wider than about three inches because you are going to have to allow for the seam when you turn in the inside to make that a nice smooth finish. If I had the opportunity to do this again, I would definitely make that U-shape just a little bit smaller. So I used my chalk pencil to define where my taper was going to be. I had already tried it on and determined where my waistline was. Now I take my scissors and I cut around the part that I drew the u-shape remembering to leave a little bit up at the top near the yoke because you do have to turn this over for the hem 
I took this to my sewing machine and I started on the U shape area first. I fold it over about an eighth of an inch and then fold it over again to close up the raw edge and stitched all the way around the U shape. Then I used the fabric that I had removed from the shirt to create the U shape. I folded that in half, cut it in half, and I ended up with four strips. I took these strips and folded them so that the raw edges would be closed up on the inside. I did this on both pieces, folded it over, and then took it to my sewing machine and sewed them down to make the straps that go on the back of the shirt. Once I sewed that down, I attached with my sewing clips the ties to the back of the shirt. I measured about three and a half to four inches down and then I put the second set of straps closer to the waistline in case I needed a little bit more tapering at the waist and I could adjust there. Then I took my shirt back to my board because I needed to take the shirt in just a little bit more. I tried it on and I realized it could use a little more tapering. I used my chalk pencil, went in, made the marks, took it back to the sewing machine and made those adjustments. I did not take any off of the sleeves. I left the sleeves just as full as they originally were. I tacked down the straps and then I'm done. Next on to the dress, I took this slim fit Brooks Brothers shirt and combined it with a regular fit Brooks Brothers shirt. This actually worked out really well. I laid the first shirt down on my board and determined where I was going to cut it off. I took the second shirt to see how much larger it was going to be than the first shirt and it wasn't that much of a difference which is pretty surprising. So I buttoned the shirt up and then I looked to see where I was going to cut first. Now the main body, the top portion of the dress is going to be made from the shirt that is a slim fit. So I went about two or three buttons down and that's where I'm gonna cut. So after I removed the pocket, I determined where was gonna be my straight line and that fell right above the little black mark that was in the shirt. I don't know if you can see that on the, the video, but there was a little black mark just below that line. So I made my line and I cut. Using this board is really great because I can see the black lines through my shirt. I put the rest of that shirt to the side thinking that I wasn't going to have to use it. Well, I ended up using it afterwards. Now here is the regular fit shirt and you can see that it is a little bit larger. So what I did was I started directly under the underarm and that is where I cut straight across. I used my ruler and I used my chalk and I started to make the line all the way across. After I created my line, I cut it straight across. And then I put it up to the shirt and realized this is not gonna be long enough. I wanted a longer shirt dress. So I went back to the piece that I had cut off, the original slim fit shirt, and I saw where the mark was on the shirt. I measured just below that mark, folded it over, cut that excess off, and then I added that portion to the middle of the shirt, which was really nice because it was the same fabric and it sewed together perfectly. I didn't have to worry about folding over or making any adjustments in there. I cut that part off, removed that button. Next was to remove the bottom portion of the shirt because this needed to be straight in order to connect to the bottom. So here I put that middle piece in, I slid the bottom up next to the middle piece and you see that the regular fit shirt has about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter on each side. So I used my chalk pencil to make marks on each side of the shirt so that I would know where to sew straight down when I took it to the sewing machine. When I go to my sewing machine, I sew those side seams first, I cut the excess off, then I press it, and then I start to attach the top to the middle to the bottom. 
So here I am connecting the top of the shirt to the middle piece. And as you can see, it sews through perfectly. I have no excess, nothing to worry about. Here I am attaching the bottom of the dress to the middle portion. Now when I got to the side seam, I remembered that I needed to sew down the side. So I flipped that over and I stitched my side seams down. Um, and then I also had a little bit of excess in the back. You know, men's shirts have that pleat in the back, so I had to take that in also. All right, now, once I sewed all of those seams, I did a top stitch on both seams. And this helped the seam lay down very nice and flat so that when I pressed it, it was a great finish. Now we're on to the pink shirt. This is the shirt by Frankie Shop with the detachable sleeves. So the first thing I did was cut the sleeves short and create the detachable sleeve. I took, I also measured myself to see where I wanted the shirt to stop. I wanted it to stop right above my, right below my waistline because I didn't want this to be a crop top. So I cut it long enough just so that I would have about an inch to turn up for the hem. I also measured the width of the shirt to make sure that I was taking it in the correct amount. I took the one detachable part, laid it over, um, folded the shirt over, and did both of those to make sure that both sides were even. This is also a tip to do anytime you're cutting a shirt um, and you want both sides to be even, just fold it over or take the one piece and put it on top of the other. And that way your sides will come out just even. I pulled all of this to the side and took this to my sewing room. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is hem the detachable sleeve and then hem the sleeve of the shirt. I turned both of them up a half an inch. I should have finished the edges using a zigzag stitch, but I neglected to do that. I strongly suggest that you use a zigzag stitch to finish that edge, just to give it a nice professional finish. Here we have the sleeve that I detach from the original shirt. I'm also making a one inch hem in this sleeve all the way around. Once I make both of these hems in the detachable portion and the sleeve, I go to my ironing board and I press this down. Always remember to press and sew. Now when you, if you recall, when I cut the sleeve, I did cut it above the seam line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim very close to the seam line and cut that excess off. I do not want that bulk in there. I want this to have a nice clean sleeve when I put it in. So I cut that off and then I lengthen the stitch on my sewing machine because I'm going to do a basting or gathering stitch depending on what you want to call across the top of the sleeve cap. And this is so that I can pull the bobbin thread and create a bit of a sleeve cap so that the sleeve will fit nicely back into the opening of the shirt. So I pull that in and you can see me sliding the fabric around and creating a nice clean cap. We'll talk about this more in our future how to sew videos. Now this frame just allows you to see where the sleeve needs to be pressed versus after it's pressed, how nice and clean that looks. So then I take the detachable part of the sleeve and put it inside just to make sure that everything's gonna fit perfectly. And it does. And now I need to add buttonholes to the outside. First, I'm using my clips to mark where the buttonholes need to go. I put one at the very top and then I spread the clips around the sleeve to determine where they need to go. And this is just based on the fact that I only have five buttons. So I only am going to space um, five clips around the sleeve. 
these mark where I put my buttonholes and then I start to put my buttonholes in and I'm telling you all this Opal 690 makes the best buttonholes I have ever seen and it cuts my thread at the end so I don't have to worry about that and the button fits perfectly now in order to open the buttonholes here's a little trick put a straight pin at the end of the buttonhole use your seam ripper stick the seam ripper into the hole and slide it forward and it will automatically stop and you won't have to worry about ripping your fabric these clips come in so handy i used a clip at the shoulder of the shirt and a clip at the shoulder middle of the sleeve i opened up the shirt put the right sides together at the top of the sleeve and began to clip the sleeve into the sleeve cap. I did this all the way around until I reached the underarm. When I got to the underarm, I looked at the side seams of the shirt to see if this was going to come together or if I was going to have to take it in a little bit more. If you recall, I have not sewn the side seams yet. I waited until I got the sleeve in to see if the sleeve would fit in perfectly. And then when I realized that it did, I sewed the side seams. And you can see here that once I got to the side seam, it was a perfect about 5 8 seam allowance that I needed to sew straight down. So I sewed my side seams, remembering to backstitch at the beginning, and then sew straight down. Now I'm good to go to sew the sleeve into the armhole. And as you can see, these clips, they are just great. And I pull them out before I get to them on the sewing machine with no problem. Now I'm going to put a hem in the bottom of the shirt. I cut the bottom button off and I'm folding over the hem just about a little over five eighths of an inch. I turn the raw edge in and I sewed straight on top of it. If I'd had the correct color in my serger, I would have serged it or I could have zigzag stitched it, but I thought that folding it over would give it a nicer, cleaner finish and it definitely did. The next step is to mark where the buttonholes go. So I take the detachable portion of the sleeve and put it inside the correct sleeve. This is actually the one that goes on the other side. Uh, so I get the right one and I put that inside. I use my invisible or disappearing ink <laughs> pen and I mark my buttonholes on the inside. I decided I want to use these cute blingy buttons uh, because I think they'll stand out really nice. And then I hand sew those cute buttons on. The next step, I'm taking that excess piece of fabric and I'm using my zigzag stitch to finish off the edge and zigzag all the way around. At this point, I knew that I wanted this piece to be a bralette, but it still needs straps. So later on, I'll put those straps on, but for now, we're just gonna go with it. And what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell so that you don't miss an update. We are now at 1,000 subscribers, yay! And for the final shirt, really isn't a shirt, it's really a bolero. I had this leftover piece from the regular men's shirt, the regular size men's shirt. Remember the other one was a slim fit and it was the perfect shape to make a little bolero. So I just took it to my sewing machine. I turned up the edge about an eighth of an inch, rolled it over to enclose the raw edge and stitched all the way around. And that's it.
I hope you guys enjoyed this upcycle. Please leave me some comments below and don't forget to like, 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 and I will see you guys in the midweek. All right, bye.